So, how alarming is this? Let's bring in Dan Hoffman, former CIA station chief, also served in Moscow, Iraq, and Pakistan, and as a Fox News contributor. So, uh, we have two people killed on this, uh, Dan, as you know. One, uh, as Trey just said, a uh, British subject, a British citizen. And now the uh, Israeli foreign minister has joined the UK foreign minister in blaming Tehran. What do we do? Well, I think, first of all, we have to recognize that there's a real escalation going on in the Gulf between Iran uh, and Israel. Israel reportedly did take a lethal strike against an Iranian, uh, the commander of an Iranian proxy militia in Syria. Uh, and remember, Israel has, has launched significant attacks against Iran's nuclear program as well, while Iran has been very active in launching attacks against, uh, against uh, shipping in the Gulf. Iran has widespread use of drones through their proxy militias in Iraq, the Houthis in Yemen, um, as, well as, uh, as well as by uh, Hamas against Israel. And so for the United States, uh, there's significant concern about freedom of navigation, but in a greater issue for us is the nuclear deal. And the Biden administration is very interested in getting back into that very flawed deal, and I'm sure that uh, President Biden is asking the intelligence community whether the domestic crisis in Iran uh, might induce the Iranians to get back into the deal to uh, receive some sanctions relief and relieve some pressure that they're facing from their own population. You just mentioned the domestic crisis. That is a reference to the pro there have been widespread protests on the streets of uh, Iran throughout the country against the regime. How significant is that, uh, especially in the way the Biden administration calculates uh, its efforts to try to get back into the deal? So I think that's really significant, and it goes back, uh, you know, back in November of, of 2019, uh, known in Iran as Bloody November, because people took to the streets to protest against the very inept government. And then we had record low turnout for the Iranian presidential election, under 50 percent uh, turnout, and people hitting the streets protesting lack of basic services like water all over the country, including in Tehran. It also exacerbates the issue of separatism in Iran, which has been a big deal in western parts of Iran with Kurdish separatists, and in Khuzestan, where there are those uh, significant mem numbers of the population protesting lack of water with uh, placards of, I am thirsty. Uh, and so Iran is under unprecedented strain, economic strain from horrific government mismanagement uh, and utterly inept. Uh, government ability to deliver basic services from those sanctions that the Trump administration imposed, uh, and then as well from, from the separatism. So that certainly weakens Iran's hand. The challenge for the United States is that the JCPOA was horrifically flawed, as we've stated many times on this program, because of the nuclear sunset clauses, a failure to deal with the ballistic missiles that Iran holds, and Iran's state sponsorship of terrorism. If we le relieve the pressure by re eliminating the sanctions, then we eliminate our leverage to strike a better deal. I think that's the challenge for the Biden administration. And, and finally, Dan, as you point out, the tremendous pressure on the government domestically, and now the new hardline uh, president takes over this coming week. At the same time, dealing in, in foreign affairs, Iran apparently striking out. What if the shadow war in the Persian Gulf escalates? Uh, what do you fear could happen, and do you think it will get out of hand? Well, I think Israel is, is certainly trying to deliver a very clear statement about a red line, that Iran should not be targeting Gulf shipping, and, and that Mercer Street ship uh, is run by uh, the Zodiac Group, which is an uh, Israeli-run uh, Israeli uh, group. And so the Israelis are making it clear that they will counter Iranian strikes, and that's meant to deter future Iranian action. But there is the concern that when Iranian hardliner uh, Ibrahim Raisi takes office August 5th, that uh, Iran may decide to ratchet up the pressure. And, and ultimately, that's the question, whether Iran bows to some of this pressure and retracts that past his prologue, they won't do that, or whether they go into full rogue status uh, and proceed with development of a nuclear weapon and up the, uh, the kinetic attacks on Israel and our allies in the Gulf. I think that's a key intel a requirement for the intelligence community in the United States right now, as so well, that the Biden administration can be informed and make better policy. As well as targeting its opponents and activists, uh, both inside Iran and outside Iran, the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism, Dan Hoffman. Dan, always good to see you. Thank you.